Hello, everyone. My name is Li Shanghe. I'm assistant professor at Shanghai International Studies University. In this talk, I'm going to present a paper called "The Solution to the Binding Problem in Risk Decision Making." This is a joint project with Sudeep Patil, my postdoc advisor at the University of Pennsylvania. To start, let's consider a simple risky choice task between X and Y. X will offer you a 10% chance of $100. A 90% chance of zero. Y offer you 10% chance of zero, but 90% chance of $100. Economic theories typically assume some form of utility calculation for both of the options. For example, if we take expected value calculation, then the utility of X is $100 times 10% plus zero times 90%, which is 10. Similarly, the utility of y is zero times 10% plus 100 times 90%, which is 90. And in the sequential sampling literature, most models also follow this tradition by calculating some multiplicative utility for both of the options, and then define a drift rate v, which is a function of these two calculated utilities. But how are the utilities of these options derived? Neither the economic theories and the sequential sample models that I just mentioned provide process level account for this problem. And to us, the most prominent process to achieve this is to associate each pair of payoff and probabilities in each branch correctly. And that's what we call the binding problem. And to illustrate for gamble X, Correct binding means to associate 10% chance with $100 and 90% chance with zero. And if decision makers associate 90% chance with $100, then that's incorrect binding. This problem is very similar to the classical binding problem in cognitive science. For example, if we want to represent a red triangle in memory, then we need first to encode the red as a color and the triangle as a shape. And we also need to associate the color red and the shape of triangle to form a proper representation of the red triangle. And similarly for risky choice, for we need the some form of branch representation for the purpose of the calculation of branch utilities. And as I mentioned earlier, in the sequential sampling literature, there's no process level account for such kind of branch representation. And without a clear branch representation, sequential sampling models actually may make absurd predictions for a choice between X and Y. The reason for this is X and Y has exactly the same attribute values. And the only difference between the two is the branch structure. And without knowing this structure, uh, sequential sampling models seem to be unable to distinguish the, between these two gambles. But on the other side, we as decision makers are able to do this pretty easily. And how we address this, and by in the same way, how can we help sequential sampling models to solve this problem? By drawing from the broad cognitive science literature on binding, we turn to attention mechanisms. Specifically, we propose an interactive sampling mechanism to solve this problem. The key idea of interactive sampling is that information sampling is not sequentially independent. Rather, the likelihood of sampling a payoff depends on its associated probability. To show how interactive sampling works, Let's consider an attentional drift diffusion model, or ADDM, as the preference accumulation framework. And this highlighted part is the essential preference accumulation process. Here, Nx is the number of branches in gamble X, and Ny is the number of branches in gamble Y. And very importantly, theta it, or theta jt, is the momentary weight on the payoffs xi or yj 
uh, in each of the gambles depending on attention and location at a specific time t. If a feature is attended at time t, then the corresponding theta is equals, equals to 1. For unattended attributes, the, their corresponding theta is delta, which is a free parameter smaller than 1. How should decision makers allocate attention with the attentional drift diffusion model? Well, we know that independent sampling won't work. And that's because if independent sampling is combined with the attentional drift diffusion model, then the probabilities are totally ignored in the preference accumulation process. That makes the attentional drift diffusion model reduced to the equal probable heuristic. By contrast, Interactive sampling works. That's because interactive sampling substitutes the probabilities with the attentional weights. And that makes the attentional drift diffusion model to mimic the multiplicative utility calculation by additive preference accumulation process. And very interestingly, we find that interactive sampling combined with the preference accumulation in the attentional drift diffusion model leads to the decision field theory. To state more formally, here is the proposition related to how interactive sampling can make the attentional drift diffusion model to make utility maximizing predictions. In the attentional drift diffusion model, for any payoff xi uh, from in the uh, binary choice between x and y, if the proportion of attention it receives is proportional to its associated probability or subjective probability then the attentional drift diffusion model may makes utility maximizing predictions for risk choice in the form of multiplicative utility. Next, let's take a look at the experimental evidence for interactive sampling in risky choice. Specifically, we analyzed eye tracking and mouse lab data from six experiments, including two eye tracking experiments from Fittler and Glockner, two mouse lab experiments from Petrua et al. 2018, and two newly collected mouse lab experiments with, with five branch gambles. And the data, the data of each trial include a sequence of information sampling uh, before the choice is made. The key prediction of the interactive sampling hypothesis is the proportion of attention to a payoff depends on its associated probability in the branch. Uh, to test this prediction, on the x-axis, we, we plot the probabilities of each branch. And on the y-axis, we have the proportion of attention to the associated payoff in the same branch. And the, as you can see, across all the six experiments, the, there is a very strong correlation between the branch probability and the proportion of attention to branch payoffs which is consistent with the interactive sampling hypothesis. To more closely mimic the sequential attention dynamics, we calculated a second sequential interactive sampling effect. Specifically, we calculated a second dependent variable called the proportion of immediate transition from the branch probability to branch payoff. And we find this proportion of immediate transition is highly dependent on the branch pay probability. Again, uh, that, that is, is consistent with the interactive sampling hypothesis. Overall, we find a very strong effect in the tension data across the, across the six experiments consistent with the, the uh, interactive sampling hypothesis. And then we also provide the computational model to capture the interactive sampling hypothesis. To model the full sequence of attentional sampling, we need to define a transition matrix. Consider, for example, the choice between X and Y. In this binary choice, there are a total of eight different features, X1, P1, X2, Q, P2, Y1, Q1, and Y2, Q2. So we need to define an eight by eight transition matrix from each row feature to each row column feature. We define the transition probabilities as a number of different variables. 
including whether the column belongs to X or Y, whether the column is a payoff of probability, or it belongs to first or second branch of a gamble, and a set of variables indicating whether the row and the column belongs to the same option, the same attribute, and the same branch. And if the row is a probability, if we include another set of predictors that take the probability value of the probabilities into account. We are particularly interested in how the value of the probability influences subsequent sampling of its associated payoff. And we call this parameter the interactive sampling parameter. We then estimated the interactive sampling parameter on the individual level with the hierarchical Bayesian implementation of the model. And here's the distribution of the estimated parameters across the six experiments. As you can see, it's clear here that almost all participants show positive interactive sampling parameters. And also, it's pretty obvious that the newly collected five branch gamble experiments had both broader and higher interactive sampling parameters. That's probably because the five branch gambles offer more sensitivity for the estimation of the interactive sampling parameter. Finally, according to the interactive sampling hypothesis, stronger interactive sampling tendency should lead to more utility maximizing choice behavior. And we tested this with individual level estimation of the uh, interactive sampling parameter. Uh, in this figure on the x-axis, you can see the individual level uh, estimation of interactive sampling parameter. And on the y-axis, you can see the consistency with expected value maximization behavior. And in the pooled analysis, we find a moderate correlation between the two. And in another mixed effect regression that considers systematic differences across experiments, the fixed effect is also significant. To wrap up, in this paper, we propose an interactive sampling mechanism to solve the binding problem for risky choice. And in analyzing the process level data from six experiments, we find substantial evidence for interactive sampling. And in line with our theory, we show that interactive sampling can predict a multiplicative utility maximizing choice behavior. And in the final remark, we, we, we suggest that interactive sampling, when combined with attentional drift diffusion model, can be used to categorize sophisticated risky choice behavior. That's all about this talk. Thanks for your interest and in finishing this video clip. All feedbacks are welcome.